Hello, I am Lux. Called it. We said it from the very beginning. She's evil! <laughs> um, hi, Ember here. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episodes 25 and 26, School Rays, as opposed to School Days. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming a mile away. Just something about her. Now looking back on it, they almost made it too obvious, but it was fun for the episode. But then after that, you're like, yeah. The only part we were never quite sure on is who she was working for. It was either Queen Chrysalis, they say, or herself. It turned out to be herself, even though she was communicating with Tyrek. She wasn't working for Tyrek. Because Tyrek isn't getting the advantage here beyond revenge. Cozy's plan was to get rid of all magic and control the school of friendship. Getting power from friendship because there was no more magic. So all Tyrek got was the seven of them trapped in Tartarus. Which they were able to prove was a very stupid idea. Yeah, specifically Pinkie Pie. Oh, oh yeah. Please, no! <laughs> well, Twilight pointed out, she's like, you do realize you're stuck here forever with us and we're not in cages we're just here and we have all our friends you know except for the fact that our other friends are in trouble because of the lack of all magic we're pretty good uh, speaking of magic i also like how near the end the um changeling and the others pointed out like yeah there's magic in what we do as well so the changeling couldn't transform without magic and the magic of the pearl couldn't work for the Hippogriff Kingdom and the Sea Pony Kingdom. I hope everyone stayed stuck in whatever form they were in and didn't suddenly revert. Ooh. Because Hippogriff is their base form, Sea Pony is the transformed version. Mm. So if magic fails, Oof. which way does it fail? I'm thinking they're fine because it's a permanent state once transformed, unless you use the pearl to convert. So everybody was just stuck in the form they currently had chosen. I just the hope the magic disappearing didn't happen right when someone was transforming. Yeah, that would have sucked. Oh, yeah. Also, I really love the animations for Closey Glow in this episode. They just went all out on evil. That explains all the images I've seen when I did an image search for Closey Glow. Because <laughs> man, did people were like, she's evil. Yes, because all the episodes leaked. We figured it out before the episodes leaked. We called it from the her very first appearance. Not to say that it wasn't obvious, because she had a devious plan, and Starlight, in her former, you know, evil ways, was like, "Ooh, that's devious." Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, dear. <laughs> Which became a meme all in itself. It's wonderful, and that reminded me of. A reference to a movie in this particular episode called Silence of the Lambs. A another commonly quoted line is, hello, Clarice, which he actually never says in the movie, but everyone thinks he does. Kind of like apparently Kirk never said, beam me up, Scotty, in the original Star Trek. Try telling anyone but a diehard fan that. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the reference is specifically when Tarek is talking to Twilight and he does that whole licking his lips thing. Hannibal Lecter is famous for doing that when he's in the jail and he's talking to this investigator who's trying to use his knowledge of serial killers to hunt down another serial killer so that's where the reference came from i also like the constant seven of us seven of us <laughs> also i'm trying to figure other than the way spike uses fire what's magic and dragons probably the whole being fireproof also, breathing fire, because that's not natural. Also, where does their powers lie? Is it, is it in the whole creature thing, so they would lose their abilities on the second day? Uh, he was having trouble with the letter from Celestia, remember? Hmm. It was like, huh, I've never had a letter get stuck before. The question is, is that pony magic that allowed him to do that? Or is it dragon magic that allows him to do that? Probably a combination thereof, because the letters come from Pony. That's another thing we need a retcon explanation for. How does Spike do that? Who figured that out and why? Because most of the time, 
fire just burns things. And going back to the whole magic disappearing thing, how in the heck are Celestia and Luna's mane still working? That's gotta be magic. Otherwise, I want to know what kind of hair product they're using, because damn, I want to buy some. Because just walking into work one day with, hi. <laughs> and we'll just look at you and go, what did you do to your hair? Isn't it marvelous? Just does this. <laughs> I actually had to apply product to my hair in the mornings to get not to do this. Today, I just felt lazy. <laughs> uh, and... Naysay finally stopped being a jerk. Yeah, this episode was really good for that. Also, made me hate him a lot. Oh, yeah. But Cozy did a great job of turning the entire student body against him. And allowing him to directly see that, yeah, friendship is a weapon. And it can be used by ponies against ponies. Specifically, false friendship. False friendship is a weapon. True friendship is a shield. The animation in these episodes was also really stellar. They did a lot of really nice shots. Like that one where Cozy Glow was walking around the room and everything was panning in 3D. That's really cool, especially with the fact that they're still using Flash. Did not appear in this episode. <laughs> Just like Sasami Chan said. <laughs> uh... I read almost all of that comment. I retained almost none of it. Yeah, I still can't believe they cut your cameo. You took time off from work for that. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> not, not cutting that. <laughs> but yeah, wow. Uh, I need to read back through that comment just to see if he actually left any hints in it. He listed a large number of people who do not appear. So by going through that list, you can figure out who is going to appear. So it's like, oh, he specifically says Flurry Heart, but he, he didn't say Princess Cadence. I believe he also said Shining Armor. Yes, Sasami-chan, we are talking about your long, drawn-out comment that I asked for in a video. And it's wonderful. Keep writing them, man. They are a joy to read. They really are. It's just sometimes I fall asleep because I'm me and reading's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing about the whole magic disappearing thing, I like how they specifically bring up the crystal heart when she's talking about stuff. And magical objects. That would be one of them. So what happened to the Crystal Kingdom? Did everyone start freezing their behinds off? Because that's one of the things apparently it does is staves off that winter storm that we saw when we were first introduced to the Crystal Empire. Well, you know, they did survive before because there were ponies there. Yeah, but no one's dressed for cold weather. No, no, not in this climate. <laughs> mm. The reason we didn't see Shining Armor. Well, two reasons, actually. One, I bet you he's... No, he can't cast shield spells, dammit. The, the other reason was, of course, Flurry Heart, but the first reason was going to be a shield spell, but... No magic. But remember, he was a member of the equestrian military. So for defending the kingdom without magic, while Cadence goes to talk to the other princesses. Hmm. Which reminded me of a fun fact that was pointed out in one of the chat rooms I hang out in. We finally see a female guard. And I wasn't paying attention for it, but I think I know which scene. It's at the end when Cozy Glow is getting dropped off. Mm. One of the two guards is female. The only eagle-eyed people who are like, female, female, like the chat room I was hanging out in. <laughs> <laughs> well, after eight seasons, I, I tend to put guards kind of in the same category as background ponies. I kind of like just don't care what gender they are. I mean, gender period. It's like, oh, that person's female. Cool. That person's male. Cool. That person's queen of the hippos. That's cool. That person's a helicopter. Cool, can I get a ride sometime? Apparently it's a common joke gender. If you're allowed to fill in other, people put helicopter. I don't have enough fan blades to qualify as helicopter. Uh, so any particular nitpicky things you want to go over? Okay, the elements of harmony are magic because they're artifacts. The tree of harmony, therefore, should theoretically be magic 
and all of magic and all of Equestria was disappearing. So how was the Tree of Harmony able to rescue them? I'm thinking because it's a high concentration of magic. Also, I think it knew this was coming based on how the projection of Twilight reacted, but you guys aren't friends, but there's something coming up. Like, you guys have to be as one. <laughs> and the only other question then is, since we've seen the tree act on its own, why didn't the tree bust Starlight out? I'm thinking, future me, insert Jeopardy music here. Oh wait, cancel that. Copyright. Like, did you just talk with yourself in the future? Yes, I did. And because it's me in the future, I know what the other side of the conversation sounds like. So you're not going to hear it here. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the first reason that pops into my head is the fact that there wasn't a friendship thing going on in particular. Also, if the Tree of Harmony knew that this was going to happen, it was probably saving its strength for a specific moment that, he saw, that it saw would be a particular problem. Uh, the Tree of Harmony seems to be one of those things that lets you do as much as you can on your own. And then, you know, the elements only really come into play when we get to that last resort, final push. And that's why it's commonly referred to as a magical MacGuffin. I need to look up that term, specifically MacGuffin again. I used to actually know its definition, and then I forgot it. Very common thing for me. Like, sometimes I forget to breathe. And then he passes out and the automatic reflexes kick in. It's all good. <laughs> uh, reference to an episode of Dinosaurs. Check. Yep. But considering how the Tree of Harmony took out the Anti-Six and scared off Chrysalis and Cozy was down in the catacombs, couldn't she have just imprisoned Cozy and been done with it? And yes, I'm referring to the tree as female even though I have no idea of its actual botanical gender, I'm just choosing that because it shows its projection as Princess Twilight. Because, yes, many trees do actually have a botanical gender. Also, this points to another theory we had, that Chrysalis will be the final villain of next season. Because Chirik's still out of commission. Discord has stayed reformed. It seems a little anticlimactic to bring back Sombra. You know, he was there for two seconds. Though they could bring him back for the start of season villain. Or we could do something mild like we did for the start of this season, which was Naysay again. Well, something like Naysay. I... Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, something mild. Uh, just someone who is stubborn and um, close-minded. And some people would say that he had an awfully quick redemption. That's kind of what I was thinking. But... He kind of had his world shook. He had ponies turn against him and non-ponies rescue him after he has said to their faces multiple times that they are dangerous, worthless creatures incapable of friendship. Oh yeah, big, big world shift. I think that's commonly referred to as a paradigm shift. <laughs> Yay, buzz marketing terms. There was even one in this episode. Yes, Synergy. Go check out the Weird Al song. <laughs> and every time I think of Weird Al, I, I think of multiple songs, but the first one that popped into my head right now is specifically Word Crimes. That is great. And then right after that, First World Problems. And then the fact that he has been on an episode of Carpool Karaoke, and I have to track that down. Yes, because reasons. Many reasons. Including that he's Weird Al and it's going to be so incredibly different from the only other episode of Carpool Karaoke we watch, which is Paul McCartney. Because Sir Paul McCartney. Just interesting stories in that episode. That's the thing I'm most interested in. Weird Al singing with other people, but also, I want to hear the stories now. Because <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be like a little bit more relaxed than some of his other stuff he's done, which has been kind of more of a joke a on himself. Because even when... VH1 was doing their, you know, artist behind the scenes series. It was still very jokey. All right, but back to this finale of Cozy Glow finally showed to everyone that she was evil. Because, I mean, she had all those little puppets of the main six. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I just saw stuffed animals and I did see the strings and the thing but my brain didn't say puppets. Thank you for that catch. Because 
By being so wonderfully helpful, she's manipulating all of them. And that, I don't know why that reminded me, but I suddenly remembered that particular scene. Why don't you use your tail to swipe away the flies? The horror! It's decorative only! <laughs> I'm like, okay, Rarity. First, I want to know how you got the hairbrush out of your tail and managed to get your mane to look like that. I'm thinking a lot of help from Fluttershy. And possibly Applejack, because she's used to using a brush manually. Though that reminds me of that particular scene where, so if magic's going away, how did she grab the clouds? Abilities went second. Unicorn magic first, then pony abilities. So she was no longer able to stop the storm because her abilities were weakening, but it wasn't sunset yet. So she could at least grab the cloud. Normally she'd just be able to buck that storm out of the way. Or Sonic Rainbow Sonic Rainbowment out of the way. Also apparently in my mouth had a little bit of trouble with Sonic uh yeah. See? Had a little bit of trouble saying the word Sonic Rainbow. Well, is Sonic Rainboom fall under ability or natural confirmation? Because it's flying really, 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 really fast. Hmm. I'm thinking the fact that it was a Rambo probably leads a little bit more. At least there was some magic, maybe enhancement. Possibly, but still. And uh, you, you should have seen me when Twilight went to unlock the door to Tartarus. Oh my god, her reaction was wonderful. I was like, no, 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 don't, no. The door is locked. Don't open it. You know the seal has not been broken. Why are you opening the door? <laughs> Go back. There's no point in going in. Also, if it was possible to open a portal to Tartarus and Nese's artifact allows him to portal all over the place, why didn't anyone send a message to Naysayer to get his amulet so that the main six could have just gone in and out of Tartarus? That's a valid point. And since he said it was... Is it a single object, or was it an object that was made by ponies? Did did they create that one? Are there multiple versions of that? If true, then Celestia or some other members of the um, E-whatever may already have them. So couldn't they have just asked Celestia for that? Because the power in artifacts was going last. So that being the case... Obviously, they wouldn't have been able to find them, but why not grab the artifacts that were stored at the school? I mean, they couldn't have found them because Cozy was using them, but if artifacts were the last thing to go, that's what I would have packed, is artifacts. Multiple different kinds, stuff like that. Yeah, basically every single artifact I could get my hooves on. Also, why is the universal key only good once? I'm guessing it wasn't only good once, and I'm guessing because of the magic draining thing, that's the reason it broke. Also, why does the universal key happen to perfectly fit the lock to Tartarus? That's kind of what I was thinking. It's kind of like, wow, all these puzzles in this video game happen to perfectly fit the shape of this character, but they were made by aliens on a different planet. Hmm. <laughs> I don't get how my arm cannon happens to fit perfectly inside this lock. It's like it was custom made. So yeah, it's kind of like this. Like, this is a universal key, right? Why does it only fit one lock? And if it's a universal key, then you wouldn't think it has to physically fit inside the lock. You would just think it would touch the lock and either magically unlock it or transform to the correct key. And there was no change in the object from when Twilight took it out to when Twilight put it in the lock. The only explanation I have is it was easier to animate this way? Probably. Hmm. Yeah, there was no particular music that caught me. Which means that the background music did its job. I remember feeling lots of different emotions based on the background music. I just don't remember the music itself. And we didn't have any, like, songs in uh, the season finale. Not that it's uncommon, it's just I just realized there was no big musical number anywhere. Well, not all the villains get musical numbers. I want to know more about how Closy Glow decided to get in touch with Tyrick. And who was delivering those letters? And how were they getting in and out of Tartarus? 
I mean, normally you're allowed to write from prison, but when your prison is only accessible by a magical portal or a lock that has to be opened by magic. Speaking of Tartarus, why did they start putting all these animals in there? What's the manticore, the bugbear, and the chimera all doing in there? I can understand the bugbear because it was kind of terrorizing a town specifically, but why the manticore? It was just kind of roaming through its home territory. Weird. Like, well, why did it suddenly become a petting zoo? It just didn't seem right. And Applejack has dealt with the Chimera frequently because that was a regular part of her travel route. I'm pretty sure it was just an excuse to get a bunch of creatures we were already seeing in there. Probably. And all creatures that had some remnants of magic so that we could do the let's take all the magic we have left, blend it together, and see if we can get out of here. Though personally, I would have found it a little more um, poignant if Twilight couldn't make it out the door. Hmm. Then once the magic was back, hey, door is open. Because they wouldn't have been able to go back for her, and the door is thick enough that they probably couldn't communicate through it. I mean, really, nobody answered the free pizza delivery? Yeah, I don't think there's any guards in there, so that trick would only work if there were guards. Well, Cerberus was loose. Cerberus could answer the door. Everybody yeah. else is locked up. Yeah, but I don't think Cerberus can actually open the door. But he also wasn't right by the door when they walked in. Hmm. So any other points you'd like to go over? The Sandbar did a really good job on his fake out because they didn't even have him do a side wink to his friends, even though Naysayer's back was turned. I was just so expecting, like, as Naysayer walked off and Sandbar closed the door, I expected him to, like, open it back up and go wink and then close it again. But he was too cautious for that. Also left them doubting. He's always been a smart pony. And he ran out of apples. Which was hilarious. How do you run out of apples at Sweet Apple Acres? Yeah, and it looked like he may have been ready to toss a cow. I'm hoping the cow was helping throw. Because there was this like weird moment where he looks back at the cow and the cow looks at him and then the cow walks off. I almost want to say that that object, I'm thinking it was a pail or pitcher of some sort, may have been related to the cow. Like, maybe that was the thing you put underneath the cow to put the milk in. No, that's usually a bucket. Just trying to figure out like, why, why the cow was there. Well, it could have been curious. I mean, Sandbar came on the property. I do like how he went to the um, Kingdom Heart Crusaders, though. No, specifically Apple Bloom. It was just like, oh, that's neat. Good way to bring them in. I'm trying to think where everybody lives. Out of where everybody lives, the only one that we've really seen is Apple Bloom. So, easier to animate. Because... We've seen Sweetie Belle and Rarity's parents, but only when they were at Rarity's. And we very seriously danced around where Scootaloo stays and parents and everything else. So we couldn't go to her place. So we had to get the Cutie Mark Crusader who has the most animation assets. Yeah. Ah, that, that's a good one. That, that makes total sense. And now I want apple pie. Have a quest bar. This episode brought to you by quest bars. See how easily you slip that in there? <laughs> we wish. We are still sponsorless. Except for you loyal people over on the monetized sites. <laughs> <laughs> any other points? Because I'm not thinking on any right now. And sometimes you say something and then I'm like, aha! Cozy Glow's original motive... And, you know, actual backstory. Yeah, we don't really have any other than she wants power through friendship. That she wants power and she's going to get it through friendship. But did she always just want power and then it? she learned that, oh, I can do it this way and this is going to be the easiest. Because everyone will be loyal to me. Unlike power through fear. Where if you scare people too much, they retaliate. And also for a small bit during, um, I can't remember which episode it was between these two, where she was kind of going over her evil plan, I'm like, is she even a pony? Because she says, you ponies. Yeah, so I'm like, I was just waiting for her to transform into Chrysalis at that point. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Especially with the whole empress of friendship. At that moment, I expected, Pow! Seriously, it would have been a good time for her to transform into Chrysalis. 
Because if she's differentiating between herself or, you know, she just mean ponies as in you're not as devious as the other species? Or is she truly not actually a pony? It's just that phrasing kind of tripped me up and she's still so... so evil. But see, she couldn't really be anything else because how would she be disguised into the form of a Pegasus foal? Other than magic or potions, all of which were failing. That's a really good point. Note, I knew that and I was still waiting for her to be Chrysalis. Just that whole s setup there felt like big re not reveal. Reveal how crazy evil she is, but how high school? You're going to rule the school. What, you, you going to be Sunset Shimmer and be prom queen too? Maybe, but I also like how when she went full-on evil in front of Nase, he was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, he's like, oh, boy. Like, yes, yes, you are wise to be scared of this tiny filly. Tiny ponies can be real scary. They can get right underneath your defenses. Not only physically, but I'm so cute, look at me. And you're like, oh, <laughs> gut punch. I should have seen that coming. Yeah. Yeah, Re remember Shrek 2 and Puss in Boots? <laughs> uh, excellent. Antonio Banderas. I also liked how we played Zoro, but back into MOP. Yes, because this is the finale, so we should stay on topic. More or less. More than less. One would hope. Interesting. With the objects, I was almost expecting a transformation sequence, because we had an object for each species. So I was waiting for those to be the new elements of Harmony. If you go back, we said that earlier. So when they took the objects, I was expecting some changes or at least, you know, more of a glow than they already had. I was also expecting a Crossing the Streams reference. I was also expecting maybe something to happen to Starlight Glimmer. Yeah, because she was still kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. And all the energy kind of focused in on her, so I was like, are we going to get, like, some type of Super Saiyan transformation here? Well, I think she definitely got a boost because she winked everybody out of there. All seven of them. Yeah, I get what she did there. And I, I do like how, even though I should have predicted this, Cozy Glow turned the whole school on the student six as scapegoats. I was waiting for that from the beginning. Like I said, I should have predicted it but it wasn't really in my head. I saw her using them in some way, just not like this. Well, Nesei removing them from the school gave her fuel. Uh, actually, it just hit me. That's the reason she was upset when he got rid of the files. She was actually already planning to use them like this from the start. Because she's already tried to bust them up once, just a couple of episodes ago. And... At the end of that episode, they let it slip that the Tree of Harmony was interested in them. So, Cozy knows that they're dangerous to her plans. Which is why we get that thing when they're all falling asleep. She goes, just leave everything to Cozy. Oof. A lot to unpack in this episode, and there's probably way more that we're missing. So please, feel free to fill us in below, Aizusami-chan. Well, how about... Okay, all of magic is failing in Equestria. Why is Sapphire Shores still putting on a concert in Ponyville? To help lift everyone's spirits? Though it will probably be a very acoustic, kind of, like, unplugged version of whatever her show normally is. Because we know her shows are very extravagant. Because, come on, she needed Rarity to make multiple dresses, you know, for costume changes. Because she went to buy the one, and then she's like, oh, I need a couple more for costume changes. And Rarity's like, ah, uh, of course. <laughs> and the fact that it was Smolder who was calling her on her behavior. Man, do I like Smolder and the Griffin. Oof. Gallus. Gallus. Yes, because she was able to use the fact that Smolder's a dragon to discredit her concerns. Even though the student six saved the day, I expected more to happen with them. Though I do like how they're like, hey, we saved the world. We can graduate, right? And Twilight's like, yeah, if that's all it took. Because think of how many times she and her friends did it before she made Princess of Friendship. Ah! 
Good point. Good point. Because end of season three, she made princess, but we weren't told she was the princess of friendship right then. It took all of season four for her to find her place as a princess. Uh, so should we start wrapping things up? Because I think we're at like, what, the 50 minute mark? Uh, we are not, especially after edits. <laughs> but definite nitpick of how slowly Nisei, Celestia, Luna, and the guards were moving towards the school. Up until the point where you need to stop for tactical reasons, that probably should have been a full out run. Hmm. Yeah. Now that you point that out, they were kind of just walking at a leisurely pace. We should have seen them like at a full gallop, all of them moving. Because when they say left, nothing had been solved. I also have expected somehow that Naysay would be able to unlock that door or something. Like, we would actually see Naysay open up the doors to Tartarus along with, like, Princess Celestia or something there. I don't know. But when the main six have no magic, what's the value of rescuing them? Twilight's just one princess, and an ascended one at that. Go for the highest powers you can get. The born princesses. I need to look at that final scene again when they're all walking just to see if Celestia's and Luna's mane are still going wah, wah, wah. Because <laughs> I'm like, if magic's gone, come on. <laughs> There's no way their hair's anything but magic. I mean, really. I mean, even Cranky Doodle commented on it. So anything else? Well, a, f a few other little nitpicks on how cozy as a pegasus is going to have trouble in this magicless world because magic is used to raise the sun and moon that's canon so when the sun sets on the third day also if that's the measurement of time why haven't celestia and luna been pulling their powers to leave the sun in the sky that's a that's a good point because the sun sets on the third day and they can't bring it up again. Everyone's going to die. Also, why didn't they just, you know, stop? <laughs> Moving the sun and the moon and save the magic. Also, if unicorn magic is gone on the first day, how do we have a sunrise and a sunset? That's a really good point. I was kind of just thinking that myself. It's like, does this prove Celestia and Luna aren't really needed for that? Or is it only that they raise it? Is there for some reason the sun can't get up on its own, but once the sun is in the sky, it can traverse the sky? Except when you go back to the premiere episode of the series, the pilot episode, the fight was because Luna refused to lower the moon, which means that the moon would not set unless Luna lowered it. Unless the whole thing in the pilot episode was she was just keeping the moon in the sky the entire time. So yeah, that's kind of a question there. So how is that system still working? <laughs> because Luna even specifically says it's becoming difficult to lower the moon. So yeah, a lot of world building questions there. A lot of little things like... Uh, why, why didn't like the sun or moon or whatever stay in the sky? Why is it even a measurement of the fact that in three days this will happen? Because just leave the celestial bodies where they are and conserve your magic. I didn't even really think about that until just now. I was like, wait a minute. As you were starting to go over, I was like, huh. Because <laughs> it's canon that the unicorns raise the sun. So the sun can only move with the help of magic. If magic's gone, how is the sun moving? <laughs> Maybe it's just the hair thing. I mean, it would have been hilarious, especially if all the ponies show up and go, Oh my god, what happened to you, Prince Celestia? Magic's gone? You think this was natural? <laughs> <laughs> you have this tangled mane flowing down to the ground, looking like ordinary hair. Yeah, maybe even faded colors. That would have been kind of a nice thing, really. It's like, that would have been, whoa, no magic. <laughs> If I think about it, I could actually understand that it's still being there the first day because it could technically be considered a creature magic. 
so an attribute, which would have lasted till the second day. So in that final scene, we should have seen them. I guess I'm going to have to look at it again, but I'm pretty sure their manes were still flowing. And that shouldn't have been happening until all the sparkly bits of magic went back. So the sun, their hair. Oh yeah, there's some questions about how this magic thing works. Yeah, also how did Sweetie Belle miss out on the sparkly magic coming back to her and not physically feeling the difference so that they could have gotten out of the closet? I think the writers just forgot she was a unicorn. I think they were just going for the joke. Especially since Sweetie Belle is actually the one going, did we save the day? And you're like, you're the unicorn. You couldn't tell. Because there should have been sparks of magic coming into the closet. So even if it was dark, you should have seen the light from the sparks of magic coming back to you. Also, I love how Turek's spark of magic hit him. <laughs> He's like, eh, eh, phew. Also, the reference to um, the classic monkeys, uh, that toy that claps the symbols together that's a monkey, Pinkie Pie. And the fact that Pinkie Pie was still able to access whatever fourth wall breaking hammer space she has to do all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Because she even gave Turek a cake. The cupcakes they brought with them were spoiled, but she brought Turek a cake. They looked like Turek. It's kind of like, you could have gotten out of those handcuffs at any time? Nope, only when it was funny. Something like that. Because if they could have come up with some plausible reason for Pinky to get on the other side of the door, she could have gotten out of Tartarus by herself. Like some comical reason? Nope, everything's fine now here. What? You're back inside. Why didn't you... Uh, I just thought of a joke that Pinkie Pie would pop out of nowhere for at Canterlot and boom, solved your problem. Because then she would go from there to Canterlot and she could tell everyone and get some help or some magical reason for her to have magic right then to be funny and open up the door. Like, hey, Pinkie, try delivering a pizza again. So I think we should wrap things up. Yes. Okay, I've said that this would be the third time now, so we're good. <laughs> okay. This is the outro of me saying this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episodes 25 and 26, the season finale, School Rays. Called it! She's evil! Oh, it's just so nice of you to have stayed all the way to the outro. You know, we really appreciate your loyalty and listening to the whole episode. It's so very kind of you to leave us all these wonderful comments. And we so appreciate your generosity through Patreon and coffee. You know, it's really just magical. But to be totally honest, it's only because people are watching this that we actually do it. And I really hope that you get a laugh out of all the crazy stuff we do in these. So, yeah, there's uh, the like button, the subscribe button, the comment button, other videos, and the recommended videos. A lot of those are probably ours. The playlist, the links to more art, and the commissions, and the Patreon, and the coffee. And thank you so much. Bye bye Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive and the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.